can you please indulge me for about 15 seconds? I want us to take one breath together. So close your eyes. Take a nice, deep, mindful inhale. Slow exhale. Open your eyes. Believe it or not, you've just done your body good because you've tickled your vagus nerve. And by doing so, you've triggered the relaxation response of your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, that's the part of the nervous system that's rest and digest or attend and befriend. It's like hitting the brakes of a car that's going through the fight or flight response, or it's like rebooting by hitting control, alt, delete. Now, triggering the vagus nerve has been shown to decrease stress, decrease anxiety. It's also a, an effective treatment for PTSD. And who'd ever think that mindful breathing could alter our moments, alter our days, and ultimately alter our stories? So why begin a TED Talk with a breath? It's because of the four numbers I want to share with you. And these are four metrics that tend to carry the weight of a school district story. Now, in this case, it'll be Webster. But the data I'm going to share with you is applicable to any district in Monroe County, any district in New York State, and any district across the nation. The first number, 96%. That's the graduation rate in Webster. The second number, 90%. That's a number of our graduates every fall that attend college. And you'd look at those two numbers and you'd think, wow, that's incredible success. The students and the staff and the faculty must be feeling unabashed joy in their academic pursuits. And then I share with you the next two numbers, 29%. That's a percentage of our middle school and high school students who on last year's Youth Risk Behavior Survey, which is a national survey, 29% of our middle school and high school students reported, have, they reported having difficulty remembering things, making decisions, concentrating because of emotional trauma or emotional problems. The same percentage, 29%, also reported feeling so sad or so hopeless every day for two or more weeks that they stopped doing their normal activities. That's one-third of our students. That's 1,500 kids in Webster. The fourth number, 25%. That's the percentage of our students who take some type of pharmaceutic to deal with stress, anxiety, and depression. And that number is probably just as high, if not higher, for the adults on our staff and faculty. When I saw those four numbers, I thought, what the heck? I'd say something stronger, but our Board of Education is here tonight, and I don't want this to be the last thing I do as Webster's superintendent. <laughs> what the heck? Also, I thought, there's got to be more to this story. Seriously, why the dichotomy? Our students seem to do really well on high-stakes tests like APs and SATs and Regents exams, but that success doesn't necessarily translate to success in the emotional psyche. We're fooling ourselves if we think that the pleasure centers in our brain are going to live off of a dopamine high of getting a 3.9 GPA or a 1350 on the SATs. If we don't emphasize compassion, joy, and kindness with our students, just as much as we emphasize success in Algebra 2, in Global History, or in AP Biology, we are setting our students up, and we're setting ourselves up for something that I call the Pez Dispenser Syndrome, where we take pill after pill after pill to deal with the stress and anxiety that seems embedded in our daily lives. So, how do we mindfully react to the numbers I just shared with you? We breathe. We mindfully thoughtfully, systematically, and explicitly teach our students and ourselves to breathe. Now, I know what you're thinking. I came to a TED Talk for breathing? The mindfulness <laughs> stuff is not some 
hippy-dippy, granola-crunching, cosmic crap. It is all about the science. The effect of mindfulness on your amygdala, which is that primitive limbic part of your brain that takes over during a stress response, or the effects of mindfulness on the prefrontal cortex are undeniable, as are the effects on your neurochemistry. And I could geek out about the science for like the next hour or so, but I've got about 100 seconds left for this talk. So in Webster, we initiated a mindfulness program across our entire district, and we even hired a mindfulness coach. And we, were try we're, we are trying to get everyone involved in this exploration, from 8-year-olds to 18-year-olds to 78-year-olds. Our lunch ladies never retire. <laughs> our mindfulness coach works with our youngest students in pre-K, all the way up to our seniors in AP Physics. She works with students in the marching band and athletes on almost every one of our varsity teams. Heck, even an old stressed out superintendent can learn new tricks. And mindfulness absolutely works. My anxiety and my panic attacks have nearly disappeared. Hence, I'm giving a TED talk. And my students even talked me into singing in the musical. So I know as an educator, I have a responsibility for the academic achievement for my kids. But there's so much more to the scope of that responsibility. As an educator, I want to make sure that all of my students feel connected and safe and valued and empowered, and most importantly, they feel loved. We have to reach our students at their hearts before we reach their heads. Now, I am in no way saying that we discount academic rigor and only focus on emotional well-being for our students and for ourselves. And I'm also not saying that mindfulness is some type of magic bullet that will always result in happy kids and cute puppies and unicorns and rainbows. There is definitely a balance that needs to be struck, and we must strike it. Because when we do, our kids will feel more joy and more compassion. And think about our world right now. Man, do we need more joy and more compassion. Just like we need more light and more laughter in the stories that we write and in the way that we walk through the world together. And that reminds me of a quote by Ram Das. And what would any talk on mindfulness be without some kind of quote from a guru? Ram Das says, we're all just walking each other home. I want to make sure that my students and my friends and colleagues and my family feel so loved and so connected that they know that we joyfully and compassionately have each other's backs. Because when we do, we can breathe, we can share in the writing and the rewriting of our stories, and then together we can walk each other home. Now, 35 years from now, and to tell you the truth, I don't care how mindful I am, I will always miss my hair. Um, <laughs> but 35 years from now, no one remembers their precise test scores or their precise GPA. And to tell you the truth, no one cares. But what we will remember is who walked us home. Thank you. <laughs>